Good morning and welcome to My Left Ear. It's Saturday, February 19th. I am Carrie Freeman. Uh, this video, uh, number 77, is called War and Putin's Inner Child. And there's other things involved too. Uh, for those who don't know me, this is a Democrat democratic leaning site. I do a lot of political and psychic commentary, which will become evident as you watch. Um, personally, I'm a change agent. I help people change. I help people achieve goals. And I do psychic coaching, which is explained in two videos. The psychic coaching is video 34 and the hypnotherapy, which I've been doing for 20 years, um, is video number 10. And uh, I think they're about 20 minutes long and very informative about my process and what I do. And then below is how to contact me. Now, today of all days, I wanna say, this is for entertainment purposes only. I do it every time, but today, because we're dealing with some heavy global material, uh, and then lastly, if you haven't subscribed, would love you to subscribe and like. It helps all of us, as you know. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that I keep forgetting to say this when I do a video, is that I have registered all the messages that I've received from you about the orbs in the room when I'm doing the work. And I just love it. If I do look at a video, which I don't like spend a lot of time watching myself, um, I really don't see them. Isn't that interesting? But early on, uh, the, the friend of mine who passed away, Karen, uh, where we came up with Opinions Unlimited together, she showed up early on because uh, one of the viewers said, I saw someone behind you and described her to a T. Uh, so that was very comforting. So I'm sure she's around because of I started Opinions Unlimited. So I wanted to say something about the orbs. Thanks for the feedback. Um, you haven't seen me for a while for a couple of reasons. One is that I actually shot a 35 minute video last week. Um, I'm working with this YouTube mentor who's great. And he said, well, Try sitting a little closer. We're, we're getting a little too much of your room, and I have to agree with him, but I'm in process. So we're gonna kind of try to get it like it's a little closer and my room isn't so distracting, even though you like my purple walls. Uh, so I shot this and I pressed a button that like brought it closer. Fabulous. And I worked my butt off. I think I, I threw like eight or nine runes. It was a runes show. It wouldn't upload. Oh my God, it wouldn't upload. It kept saying to me, oh, it's gonna be three or four hours. I'm like, what? But I think it's because of the button I pushed that uh, brought me into closer view. So that happened. And then I just felt exhausted uh, and I had a little uh, stomach thing. So I said, you know what? Take a break, it's okay. And. I'll tell you about somebody I discovered, and I can't remember her name, although I can find her very easily. Um, just channel surfing YouTube, and uh, this woman who was a reader, and she had some a male with her, very nice energy. She said something I hadn't heard before, and I found it very comforting. Um, she said that she absolutely needs to take breaks. She works, she does political stuff because of the intensity of the energy that she's sharing all the time. And I went, ah, me too. And I felt less guilty. Uh, so, you know, it's called managing the empath experience. So anybody who does that, you know, is an empath. So I just wanted to say that. So self-care is important for everybody, for all of us. Um, I'm just fixing the zoom again because everything exploded on me. You know, that happens to me all the time. And then uh, a little announcement. I'm, I got contacted by another channel reader who asked to interview me, like all about me, asking me a lot of questions. And we are doing that Monday morning and then she edits it and it'll get posted probably by Wednesday evening and I'll make the announcement. I'll share uh, her site with you and I think I think I'll have the interview on my site. I have to check with her. 
Um, ah, here we go. Let's get to it. Last night, California time, Pacific time, Putin, I saw Putin come on and make the announcement. It was 6.10, my time. Uh, and he said that intelligence tells him, his staff, that Putin is ready to invade. Uh, and he's going to invade Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. It was extremely solemn. Uh, and if this happens, it will be the largest land invasion since World War II. I think somebody said 1939. So it's stunning. And when I say this is heavy, this is dire, um, I want to be really careful because um, I don't want to get ahead of myself or cocky because it's so serious. So I'm giving you my impressions uh, very carefully, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not, you know, it's important to know our limits, I think, sometimes. But if he does, it will be in violation of international law and human rights. There will be refugee issues, and this will affect the global financial markets, including us in the United States. Um, and none of the experts can really predict. I mean, I've watched them, all these great intelligent people talking about this. And Michael McFall, who was uh, the ambassador to Russia, who knows a lot, um, he's really one to listen to. His opinion, I and my left ear agrees with him, is that Biden would not have come out and shared that information unless uh, his, his intelligence was kind of perfect. Uh, I tend to agree, my left ear agrees. Um, there are possibilities. So I'm gonna go over them and I did, I did some runes, so here we go. Uh, my left ear, that feels that with Biden as president now, Vladimir Putin feels upstaged. Like he's, he's um, what's the word? Like kind of stepped into the background, like he's back here where he was right there like a partner with Donald Trump. And that ego, you know, with him. Uh, I mean, let's just say anybody that wants to create World War III is a psychopath out of nothing. He's spinning it out of nothing. And I'll, tell, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so he lost his puppet. He lost the, 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 the trumpet puppet. And he's a little shaken. Uh, and what has happened to him, and this is just my left ear, and it, you know, it reduces him a little bit, that his inner child is activated. Now, the idea of the inner child is that we all have an inner child. And when we get really upset, like really act, really uh, respond big to something, it is often it, the inner child that's having a tantrum. That's what I believe from the psychological standpoint that's happening with Putin. Uh, it's midlife, he's desperate, he wants this place on the world stage, he wants to be taken seriously. And so as they say, he's acting out with some intention. He's also extorting Ukraine. Now, I hadn't heard anybody say that word in relation to this situation, but he is, and he's doing it just like Donald Trump. I mean, they're, they're very um, closely aligned. They're alike. Um, so he's holding the world hostage, and the extortion is, you're gonna give me what I want, or I'm gonna come in and invade with my thousands of, you know, tanks and whatever. It just keeps building. Um, now, the other thing that's very insidious, dishonest, he's claiming, or he's attempting to claim, that there is genocide of the Russian people happening in Ukraine. That is Vladimir, Vlad, as I like to minimize him. He's looking for the reason He's looking for the justification. Everybody knows it. And in fact, Putin has been very, uh, one thing that's interesting about Putin, uh, uh, Joe Biden, is that 
there's plenty of things we don't know, but there's a lot he's sharing. And he's sharing it as a preemptive strike to say, we know all about what you're doing. And that's what's a little different. I think it's really an interesting um, move on Joe Biden's part. And let us not forget that Joe Biden has had years and years and years of foreign experience. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to some stuff later in a minute. So all eyes are focused on Vlad and he loves it and he loves holding the cards. But NATO is solid and NATO is in sync. All the NATO countries are aligned. And I know he's paying attention to that. So all right, I just said something. I got ahead of myself. I just, that's what I'm looking. The other thing was just me musing. Can you imagine if Trump was president right now? Uh, remember when he when he was in Russia and they said, um, did you talk to Vladimir Putin about his interference with the election? And he, he said, yeah, and you know, I don't see why he'd lie. Uh, if he says there was no interference in the election, I believe him. And everybody was horrified, remember that? Well, I just imagined if he was around now and he would say, I don't see why he'd lie about the genocide in Ukraine. Um, he needs to protect his people. That's, you know, he didn't say it. I'm just, I mean, Trump didn't say it. He hasn't weighed in. He's too involved in his own problems. But that's what we'd be looking at if he was actually president. It would be very, very scary. Very, very scary. Um, and uh, just supporting what I just said, by Joe Biden is receiving good marks for his foreign, his foreign intelligent work. And his years of experience are comforting to me. He's very strong. All right, so I'm gonna go on um, back into the United States with Merrick Garland. Um, I asked the runes, is Merrick Garland waiting for the January 6th committee to drop its information first. So I got, uh, I pulled three runes and the first rune was you. Now I didn't, I did this the other day, so I'm not gonna do it again today. I apologize, because normally I'm pulling the runes and showing them. Uh, this is you, Y-E-W, the rune of protection. And the message is control of emotions is at issue here. New opportunities and challenges are typical. So that indicates there's new information that keeps flowing in. And Merrick Garland wants a slam dunk. He doesn't want anything to go wrong. So he's being extra careful and judicious. And then whatever challenges that we don't know about. I mean, there's just tons of challenges. It says timely action, my, my, uh, Screen did it again, people. Okay, here we come. Uh, timely action and correct conduct. Correct conduct are the true protection. Protection. So it's it's telling me whether we want to hear it or not that he needs to do what he's doing, Merrick Garland. It says, don't try to pull down the veil and escape from life by denying what is happening. He's not but it says you will progress. The runes say you will progress and watch for signs of spring. And that's that's my left ear's feeling too, that in the next couple of months, pop, boom, bang, stuff is coming. Uh, it's like the song from West Side Story because they just redid West Side Story, something's coming, a little bit like that. That's where I spaced off for a second. Uh, then the second rune in regard to Merrick Garland is Gateway. And Gateway supports the first rune because Gateway says there is work to be done, both inside and out. So he's gotta come to terms with whatever fear he has and then whatever the circumstances that we don't know about yet. Uh, but it does indicate a readiness. He's getting ready. It is a rune of non-action, don't get upset. It just means he's waiting, observing, gathering. And it does say you are confronted with what is hidden. So there's some things I think they're still investigating and probably the committee also. Uh, and it says now is not the time to make decisions. Fascinating, right? 
Merrick Garland. But then the last rune, growth. Growth, the rune of growth, fosters growth. It leads to blossoming and ripening readiness. Uh, must go into things deeply, which of course this is, couldn't get any deeper. Um, all dark corners need cleaning out and sometimes with expert help. Now, despite the anxiety I get from time to time, that is very positive for Merrick Garland showing up. It's kind of hard to fathom that he wouldn't. And especially with top secret, um, he literally stole top secret uh, papers and hid them in Mar-a-Lago. And, and now we find out they've been negotiating with him for a year to get them. They shouldn't negotiate. They should have shown up, put him in um, handcuffs and, and carried out the boxes because that's what they would do with you or me if we had carried something out of the White House like that. But no, he is getting special consideration. All right, I did ask, is Joe Biden frustrated by Merrick Garland? And strangely enough, I got yes and no. So again, I got protection. I got protection. New opportunities and challenges are present. Timely action and correct conduct are the only true protectors. But then I got, excuse me, I got protection reversed. So that's where I come with the yes and no. Um, it says, be thoughtful. Do not add to the burdens others are carrying. And that means allow Merrick Garland to do his job. What's called for here is temperance and courtesy. That's the advice. Uh, you know, Merrick Garland and Joe Biden did fly to New York together to have a meeting about the, uh, the um, violence that's happening the ups, uptick in violence in New York. And one wonders if they're on Air Force One together, what are they talking about? How far can that conversation go? Because I know originally Joe Biden really wanted to achieve the separation of powers. But the last rune, here we go again, it brings us a lot of hope. Partnership. Partnership is at hand. And what are we talking about? These two guys, one is leading you know, the United States and one is leading the Department of Justice partnership. It's considered a gift by the runes and it says partnership in some form is at hand. And it's, that's really positive people. All right, here we go. Um, I did, I was curious about whether this, these plans for continuing a coup, the slow-mo coup uh, is moving forward. And uh, I just quickly took a look and it's slowing down. It's, I used the word upstaged before, uh, but it's kind of being upstaged by um, the possibility of war, because that's really serious. So we'll see. Um, I talked about the extortion. I talked about warning against overreach, excesses, striving, and that would be that's flow in reversed, and it's about Putin. It's an extra message. He's trying to exceed the power he has funded up until now. And there is a warning against that from the runes when I asked again about Ukraine. So there you go. I really focused on that today. Um, and my left ear, you know, admitted to me, yeah, Putin is dominating, but he's weak. And that's why he's dominating. Um, and the runes that followed this, harvest, which is fertile, which is um, a good outcome, but it's one year. So it tells my left ear that there could be a whole year of negotiation and back and forth stuff. It could be because harvest signifies one year, that rune. And then the last one, wholeness. It's another gift. Sometimes that last room comes and it pinks, you know, it like pings and it says, but wholeness, which is corrective, corrective. We want wholeness in the world. So I keep getting some, you know, there's nothing positive about war, but I keep getting some hopeful um, information here from the runes. Um, now, 
here's the deal. My left ear, my left ear feels that he may, Putin may still make a move as a threat, as part of his um, plan to extort and do some initial damage, maybe with casualties, because he wants to appear dangerous and serious. And listen, he is dangerous. But also, what I put in bold here when I'm looking at my notes, he needs to save face. If he doesn't invade fully, he needs to save face. Because how do you gracefully pull out all that artillery from surrounding the Ukraine? I'm moving on for a second here as I'm wrapping up. Uh, will Fannie Willis, Fannie Willis succeed in indicting Trump in Georgia? And I got yes, but with challenges. And she may put it on hold for reasons we can't know yet. Uh, I, because I got the warrior reversed. It talks about ill-timed action. Uh, but it says, don't grieve. But then I got wholeness. The rune of great power, making life force available to her. It tells her, do not retreat in the face of a pressing situation. Such a retreat is a retreat in strength. So if she has to pull back and let someone else move in front of her, it's, it's okay. And then we got flow, upright. Unknown powers are active here. Powers that nourish, shape, and connect. It's water, fluidity, awakening of the intuitive. So the moon draws us towards union and merging, cleansing, reorganizing, realigning are the key. And flow tells us that in fairy tales, it's the happy ending. So she is a yes, Fanny Willen is a yes, Willis is a yes, she will be successful, but maybe, maybe with a delay and there will be a happy ending. Uh, now we're just getting to what recently happened. Oh, I went all the way to the end and I didn't mean to. What recently happened with um, New York uh, that, um, here we go, Letitia James, New York. There's a civil suit case and uh, they, the judge who is very tough has told uh, Trump, Ivanka and um, I think Junior, because I think Eric already testified and did did the Fifth Amendment 500 times, Eric. I think it took five or six hours. So they are being told, you have to do the deposition. You have to. Um, so they can either not show up, which will be bigger problems for them, or show up and claim the Fifth. My left ear thinks they will all show up and claim the Fifth. But that doesn't, that doesn't uh, you know, get them off the hook. Uh, this civil suit is about property, finances, and fraud. Some of the stuff that Al Capone was taken down for. Uh, because Donald Trump doesn't have impulse control and because he's so angry, I think he might not be able to say, I claim the, fi uh, claim the fifth over and over and over. I think he'll spew out some anger that can be used against him. That's his pattern. And he'll mess up. And then Trump's attorneys wrote some public statement that there's really no reason for him to be deposed about this because he knows very little about the business and the properties and the decisions that are made. But the very next day, Trump did a formal statement. It showed up on Twitter um, claiming, basically, I don't want to read it, but he claimed he knows everything. He knows all the details because he's Donald Trump. This is a disaster for him and his lawyers. A disaster. Now, when all of them claim the fifth, according to MLE, watch for seizures of their properties to begin. Because when everybody claims the fifth in a civil case, not in a criminal case, it can be used against them. And so the attorneys, the, uh, the prosecution can say, well, this is just way too suspicious and we feel you're hiding grave material and we're gonna start to seize your properties 
or assets or whatever. So it is not the answer for them. And I say, my left ear says, watch for a slow motion bankruptcy. Been watching Glenn Kirshner, I watch him all the time. Sometimes he even answers my tweets. He's such a polite man, he's such a gentleman. Um, but I agree with him, after the first indictment, others will follow, I said that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yes, there will be a trucker event in the United States. I don't have any details, but keep an eye out for it. Sorry, we'll be more prepared though. Um, and then Giuliani, who my left ear and me feel that, you know, he's, he's an active alcoholic um, and he's desperate. And I pulled one room for him about this showing up for the committee and uh, testifying. My left ear doesn't think he's gonna be uh, uh, transparent is a good word. Uh, he's gonna show up because he's kind of afraid not to, but he's gonna dance and try to monkey around. But the rune I pulled was very serious. The rune is stand still. And it's just like one pipe, nothing. It's not a one, it's not an L, it's just this stand still. And Stan Still says, this is the, um, this is the spiritual, um, it's, what does it say? I'm remembering it now. The cold winter of spirituality is upon you. You are alone. You cannot look to anyone for help or support. That is Giuliani going into the, com the, the committee. Uh, to um, testify or pretend to testify. We don't have a lot of faith in him. Um, now, he came out and made a, a, a statement after the Super Bowl about Eminem taking a knee, and um, which I loved. And he said, why doesn't he just get out of the United States? Why doesn't he just move? He's talking about Eminem. So what does Eminem do? He uses his poetry. He uses his brilliance. And he wrote a rap song in the last three days about Rudy Giuliani. It is brilliant. It has graphics. I mean, it's great. And uh, look it up. I saw it on Twitter, so I don't know how to tell you how to find it, but look it up on Google. Uh, Eminem raps about Rudy Giuliani, and I bet it pops up. It's great. I now just love Eminem. Uh, I did shoot with Eminem when I was at Universal Studios. It was a night shoot, it was a music video, and every other word was the F word. <laughs> I didn't meet him though. I was just around. Uh, once again, I said this earlier, uh, my left ear thinks things are gonna really start to come pop late March, early April. Now we're into the good evidence. So here's a, f a couple of things that were, I was someone else's good evidence, you know, cause I collect these little stories. Uh, Valentine's day, I walked out my front door. I saw my neighbor had a big bag of garbage sitting there, which we all sometimes do. It's not a complaint. And then another neighbor, neighbor same balcony had a small, and I went, I'm gonna take out their garbage for Valentine's Day. So I did it and they didn't know. And a couple of days later, um, I said, listen, I did this on Valentine's Day, not because your garbage was bugging me, but because I thought it was like a nice gesture. And <laughs> my neighbor uh, wrote back, she's a character and went, aren't you cute? <laughs> uh, then I was at La Super Rica, which is the famous uh, Mexican restaurant in Santa Barbara standing in line because you're not waited on. Uh, but Julia Child wrote about it. It's the best. So I was there in line waiting to order. Two women were behind me and they were from Los Angeles and they were, all of a sudden they went, oh no, they don't take credit cards. I, do we have enough cash? And they were looking in their wallets and I'm thinking, they're at Super Rica and they don't have cash? So I chatted with them for a minute. Well, it turned out one of them lived a couple of miles from he, from me in uh, Los Angeles. 
So I just said, look it, you're from Los Angeles. You're going in to eat. I'm going in to eat. Do you want me to venue, Venmo you some money or something? And they, I said, I have some cash. You could Venmo me. And they went, oh my God, that, that is so nice of you. They, they were flabbergasted that I offered that. But uh, between them, they came up with enough money. So they said, no, no, we're not going to take the Venmo, but we're not going to do the Venmo or take your cash. Thank you so much. So that was kind of fun. They were like stunned. <laughs> they just couldn't believe I did it. Um, and then this has nothing to do with me. It's a story of kindness that really touched me. An 11 year old girl in the Midwest lost her father a month or two before a father daughter dance at school. So they are football fans and her mother wrote to their favorite football player, Anthony Harris, uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. And he, she told Harris the story and said, is there any way you would escort my daughter to the dance? He wrote her back right away on Instagram. There's a really good chance. Let's see what happens with the playoffs. Of course, they didn't make the playoffs. And he wrote back and said, I'm in. Well, then he made sure she had a beautiful dress and all of this, he flew in. He took her to the dance. He did not leave her side. And her mother um, was an escort so that she could be around it and she could chat with him. But the mother reported he never left her side for that whole dance. Is that a beautiful story or what? So I'm following him on Instagram because what a human being, what a human being. Um, and I, you know, I don't know whether to say this or not, but I think it's the climate we live in now, I'm going to say it. He's a black player and she's a white little girl. Uh, makes it even more special to me. Now we got the quotes. I'm just doing this one quote because it's, it's, it's like a passage, but it really struck me. You know, I like stoic philosophy and sometimes I bring it in at the end. And this just, I just thought it would really ping for you guys. It's about dealing with anxiety. Not that any of you have anxiety. Um, it's by Marcus Aurelius. And he's, the title of it is, Have No Opinion. So it says, he says, you don't have to have an opinion about this or that. Well, actually, Ryan Holiday, who's... Uh, like a modern day stoic who's written a ton of books and teaches this. Ryan said that. And by the way, you could look him up. He's great. Uh, Ryan Holiday, as an introduction, said, you don't have to have an opinion about everything. All right. So now here's the quote. Marcus Aurelius said, I think about this all the time. I don't have to have an opinion about this. I can just let it be. I can ignore it. I can realize it doesn't really pertain to me or I can just see it as it is. And I'm adding the word neutral. He said, he said, I don't need to say that it's good or bad, fair or unfair. It just is. I'm gonna look at it as an objective piece of information. It doesn't need me projecting my thoughts or beliefs or perceptions on it. You don't have to have an opinion about everything. Well, you know what, that, that, I hadn't read it before until last week and that kind of lifted me. And during the week, which was just a little bit touch and go and um, a couple of things happened that ruffled me. And I went to, you know what, Carrie? You don't need to have an opinion about this. And I'm telling you, whoosh, so play with that this week. I'm glad to be back. Um, I'm gonna do that interview. I'll see you next week and let us pray for peace and negotiations. I mean, seriously, folks. <sighs> Listen to this twice maybe because there's some good material in it, okay? That's, I haven't said that before, but that's my that just came up for me. So here I say to you, Thanks for your love. Thanks for your patience and support. Make peace, make memories. Okay, here we go. We're getting off the airplane. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.